Okay, so this is still a 1M revision seminar and I just wanted to talk about mathematical induction. Okay, so first up I'm going to say there are two sides to understanding mathematical induction and this is true of many mathematical topics so it's a good lesson to learn now. Um, you have to just understand it philosophically and, get a f and, and feel comfortable with the overall idea and you also have to be able to deal with it in a, on a day-to-day -day situation where someone gives you a mathematical induction problem and you have to do it. And they're separate. Okay, so you can have all these great analogies that will help you understand the concept of math mathematical induction and you can have a real good feel for what mathematical induction is trying to achieve but then you can be faced with a problem and go, oh, I don't know, what do I do now? And conversely, um, you can be faced with a problem and be able to, contrapositively I suppose, um, you can be faced with a problem and know what to do but not have the slightest clue what induction is. Um, and it's important to realise that they are actually separate and you're going to need to feed both of those needs. And so I'm going to attempt to do both here. Um, so the idea. So mathematical induction is a meta language thing. It's similar to all those other things um, that you do in the deductive reasoning area, um, but it's slightly higher again, okay? So mathematical induction is an action that one performs on statements. Okay? So the idea goes like this. The key part of mathematical induction is that you want to make a statement about natural numbers. Okay, the numbers starting at 0, possibly 1, 1 or 0, doesn't really matter where, it could start at 10, but the number's starting somewhere and you want to make a statement about natural numbers. And you want to make a statement about all the natural numbers simultaneously. So for example, you'd like, uh, you could want to say, if x is a natural number, then 2x plus 1 is odd. Okay, and that's a statement about all the natural numbers. Great. And the way that we do it is by this little magic trick uh, where we say, I'm going to assume it's true at some point and use that information to prove that it's true to the next point. Um, and that is the key mo thing that we're doing in mathematical induction. And then we're going to use that machine forever, starting somewhere to show that it's true for all the rest of the natural numbers. And if you feel philosophically uncomfortable with that, that's normal, um, because mathematicians also felt philosophically uncomfortable with it in the 16th century, and that what they had to do is include mathematical induction as an axiom um, of mathematics, meaning it's one of the things you have to assume works. You cannot prove that mathematical induction works using anything else, so you just have to say induction works. Okay, so if, if you feel uncomfortable going well, well, forever, that's normal, but you're just going to have to deal with it, unfortunately. So, an action we perform on statements. And so we have this machine. You know, and it's got cogs. These are my very badly drawn cogs. And it takes in a statement like, um, this thingamajig is true for n equals k. And, it, and that gets churned through um, this part of the proof and it spits out true for n equals k plus 1. Okay, so this is the action we perform on statements. We have a statement that involves a number k, uh, n equals k, and then it churns that statement through the, pro through, um, the machine and it produces true for n equals k plus 1. Okay, brilliant. So it's a little machine. Um, and um, that means that if I stick in true for n equals 1, it'll churn through and it'll say true for n equals 2. And then I take the true for n equals 2 and I feed it back in the top and it churns through and it comes out and the machine says true for n equals 3. And then I put the 3 in the top and it churns through and the machine says true for n equals 4. And then I imagine doing that forever and now it's true for everything. 
But the point is, for mathematical induction to work, I need to be able to stick something in the top. And so if, if I don't know it's true anywhere, then my machine is sitting there unused. I can't use my machine to say that anything is true because it takes in at the top um, a statement that something is true. So unless I'm sure that something's true to begin with, my machine will not prove that it's true for all n. It'll just sitting there waiting for me to put something in the top. And that is the A way of understanding mathematical induction. There is another way, but I just need to pause my video um, to go and get a prop. Okay, so let me see if I can get the camera to work properly. Nope, wrong one. All right. So the other analogy for induction is um, dominoes. These look, these are videotapes uh, because that's what I happen to have in my office. Don't ask me why. Um, to use um, as dominoes. So the concept of the dominoes is that if I want to knock them all down, um, all I need to do is be sure that each one of them will will um, be close enough to knock down the one one after it. Okay. Um, so if I had set them up badly then I wouldn't have been able to knock them all down because they're not set up so that they're able to touch each other. So I have to set them up so they're able to touch each other. And that's the bit of the working that says that true for k produces true for k plus 1. Okay, the bit of the working where you say, I'm going to set them all up all my dominoes so that they're next to each other. I can be sure that if any one of them falls down, then the one after it will fall down as well. Okay? So I just need to make individually that everything's close enough. That's the part of the proof where I prove n equals k, n equals k plus 1. But I can't be sure that all of the dominoes will fall down until I knock one of them over. Okay, now however well I've set it up, I have to knock one of them over at some point. Right. That. There we go. That was fun. Um, okay. So there we have it. Um, we have two analogies um, to help us um, have an idea of what induction is trying to achieve. But then there's some other problem though. I don't have a way of dealing with it if I'm actually faced with an actual induction problem. Okay, I know the pieces I'm going to need to do. I'm going to need to create a part of the proof that does this and I'm going to need to, to find something true so I can feed it into my machine or find something true so that I knock over the first domino. I know what I'm going to have to do, but I'm going to need to find a way of dealing with the mechanics of that. And the only way for me to show you how to do that is to do some examples. Oh, okay. Um, might be easier to look some up. Prove that. Hmm. Now I'll do this one. That one plus two plus plus n is a half of n, n plus 1 for all n greater than or equal to 1. Where when I say 1, that means that it's actually just 1. And for 2, it's 1 plus 2. And for 3, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3. And for 4, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Okay? This would be a proof that we could do by mathematical induction. So the first thing that is cluing me in to that it needs to be math that it could be mathematical induction um, is that it does refer to all of the natural numbers, or at least the ones starting at one. Okay, it is actually a statement about the natural number, um, a natural number n. So that's the beginning, uh, and then the 
second thing that's telling me that it's induction is that the very thing that I have done there moves on one step at a time. I have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus... And each n just adds an extra step. And so there's a concept of moving on one to get to the next one. And so um, that's useful because it works with my domino analogy and my machine analogy. I'm feeding in one to get to the next one. I'm starting with the result I had just then to get to the next one. Um, and so that's cluing me in that induction seems like a good idea because the very statement I have is already set up to be using one, um, an answer that I've got so far to figure out the next answer. Okay, so there are two parts to the proof. It doesn't matter which order you do them in, but you must do them both. Um, I personally like to do the, um, the K bit first because it's the hardest bit um, and then the other bit's easy. Uh, but on the other hand, lots of people like to do the first case first because it, you know, it's easy and you can get it out of the way. So, um, whatever, I'll choose the K part. So suppose... true for n equals k. Okay, so we're not really supposing that it's true for n equals k. We are starting with the statement, it is true for n equals k, and we're, feeding, we're creating a machine that will turn that into, it is true for n equals k plus 1. Okay? So this part of the proof is the construction of that machine that we were making before, uh, that we used before. So suppose true for n equals k, and then we have to do some stuff um, and say, um, okay, true for n equals k would mean that 1 plus 2 plus, plus k is a half of k, k plus 1. That's what it means to be true for n equals k. And then our goal is to, assuming that this is true, to construct a proof that will say at the end, um, therefore, true for n equals k plus 1. Okay, that's what we want to say. And somewhere in the middle here, we have to, hopefully there's enough room, fill in a proof that we'll get from this statement uh, to this statement. So we need a machine that turns true for n equals k into true for n equals k plus 1. And being true for n equals k plus 1 would mean... I'm not going to write it on my page. I will just write it down somewhere so that I can compare. Um, would mean this. 1 plus 2 plus plus k plus 1 is a half of k plus 1, k plus 1 plus 1, because I've replaced the n with k plus 1. So that's what I want to get to. I want to get to there. Okay? Cool. So I have to use this fact to get to uh, there. Okay? In fact, maybe I will write it down. Okay, that's what I'm aiming for. So somehow, I need to turn this into that. Now this is the stage where it stops being induction, it's just algebra now, uh, just in inverted commas. So what we should do is we should compare what we're going for with what we have. Um, well, what we're going for is pretty much the same as what we had, except it has an extra number at the end. It's got a k plus one at the end. So if I do this, I'll be able to more easily see the difference to it. We have to get up to k and then get k plus 1. Okay. So excellent. So really what I want my working to be, I now know what I need to do. I actually need to do this. And do some working in the middle until it comes out to this answer. Don't know how many equal signs there's going to be. And that's how you prove something that's got an equals. So let's see. I do know already that this bit is equal to half of k, k plus 1. And that's good. Because that's what I just said. This bit here is equal to that. So I'll sub that in. Uh, and then I guess my goal has a k plus 1 out the front, so I, these both have a k plus 1. I could pull that out the front. So k plus 1 
path, this curve, this one. So if I pull the k plus 1 out, I'm left with half of k here and a 1 here. Alright. Um, now this one here has the half out the front. So if I pull the half out of this bit here, I'll get a half of k plus 1, k plus 2, which is indeed equal to um, k plus 1 plus 1. Awesome. All done. Therefore, true for n equals k plus 1. So we've now made that machine. All we need to do now, um, so we've set up our dominoes so that they're the right distance apart, or we've made our machine. All we need to do now is knock the first domino over, or if you like, stick the first statement in the top. So we need to be sure that the first one is true. So let's see. Uh, if n equals 1, um, the left-hand side is just 1. It's 1 plus, but there's nothing else to add. And the right-hand side is a half of 1 times 1 plus 1, which is totally 1. Okay, so therefore true for n equals 1. So it is true for all n which are greater than or equal to 1 by mathematical induction. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so they're the two pieces of the proof. One of the key things that you need to notice about this particular proof is that it was a statement that was an equal sign. And to prove a statement about an equal sign, usually what happens is, is you start at one end, you go equals, 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 and you end it at the other end. And that's what a proof that an equal sign is in looks like. Okay. One more. Not quite yet. Let's try and find the first place that this is actually true. Yeah. This ran into the four. Okay, so no, it doesn't have to start at one or zero. It can start at any number. So, we, this is an inequality. So inequalities um, use slightly different reasoning in the middle. but the overall structure is the same. Suppose true for n equals k, and technically my k is greater than or equal to 4. And then we want to, um, after doing some working, say, therefore, true for n equals k plus 1. Okay, so this is my machine, I'm setting up my dominoes, and um, now I need to fill in the gaps in, in the middle. So supposing that it's true for n equals k means that I need to say that 2 to the k is strictly greater than 3k plus 1. Cool. And then my, the statement I want to make is that 2 to the k plus 1 is strictly greater than 3 k plus 1 plus 1. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with my inequalities, no, sorry, with, with my equations. I'm going to have 2 to the k plus 1. I'm going to fill in some working in between, and I'm going to say at the bottom, 3 k plus 1 plus 1. The problem is in the middle, there will be a mixture of inequality signs and equal signs. So, I need to somehow use this fact here. So, 2 to the k plus 1. Well, 
it's 2 times 2 to the k. Because, of course, addition up in the powers is multiplication down below. And I know what 2 to the k is greater than. I don't know what it is, but I do know it's more than 3k plus 1. So you're used to doing e equals reasoning. Well, inequality reasoning is that if 2 to the k is greater than 3k plus 1, then 2 times 2 to the k will be greater than 2 times 3k plus 1. So I can say that this is greater than that. Okay, so be aware of how you read this aloud. So far this says 2 to the k plus 1 is equal to 2 to the 1 times 2 to the k, which is greater than 2 times 3k plus 1. My goal is to get to 3 k plus 1 plus 1. I'm just going to expand this out. So 3k plus 4. Okay. Alright. Well, let's expand it out and see what we get. So this is equal to 6k plus which is supposed to be more than 3k plus 4. Okay. Hmm. Alright, well, three, 6k is 3k plus 3k. I can get a 3k out of that. I'm going to need more space, I'm sorry. So that 6k is the same as 3k plus 3k. Okay. So I don't need this to be equal to the next line, I just need it to be more than the next line. Because um, this is inequality reasoning now. Uh, so can I be sure that 3k plus 2 is more than 4? Yeah, sure, because k is more than 4. If k is more than 4, then 3k has got to be more than 4, which means 3k plus 2 is totally more than 4. So this is definitely more than 4. Awesome. I should say, since k is greater than 4, so 3k is totally greater than 4. So we don't need to make things equal, we just need to make them bigger than the thing before. As long as everything's getting smaller as we go, it'll work. So let me read this aloud so that you can see why it's okay for me to write this. 2 to the k plus 1 is 2 to the 1 times 2 to the k, which is greater than 2 times 3k plus 1, which is equal to 3K plus 6k plus 2, which is equal to 3k plus 3k plus 2, which is greater than 3k plus 4, since k is greater than 4, so 3k is greater than 4, which is equal to 3 times k plus 1 plus 1. So note that all of these here have a which in front of them. It's which is greater than, which is equal to, which is equal to, which is greater than, which is equal to. So um, my final statement really should be, I should really just make a bit of room here and say, so 2 to the k plus 1 is totally greater than 3 plus 1. Okay, so this equals does not refer to that, it just refers to the one above it. So each equal sign only refers to the thing directly above it. Cool, so I've done my inequality, my machine part of the proof. Now all I need is something to start us off with, um, which is supposed to be n equals 4. When n equals 4, let's see, the left hand side is 2 to the 4, which is 16, and the right hand side is uh, 3 times 4 plus 1, which is 15. And so therefore the left-hand side is indeed greater than the right-hand side. So it's true for n equals 4, which was my beginning statement. So therefore, true for all n greater than or equal to 4 by mathematical induction. Okay, so I've done two examples now. So far I've done an example involving an equality 
an example involving um, an inequality, and there is one more that's common, which is an example involving a divisibility. Give me a second to figure one out. Okay, so this, I'm assuming that n is an integer here. Um, prove that n, 7 to the 4n minus 1 is a multiple of 5 for n greater than or equal to 1. Uh, let's just check that. Probably need a calculator. 7 to the 4, oh gosh, that's way too big. Okay. Okay, <coughs> so I am going to have to check that with a computer when I get up to it, but we'll deal with that later. Okay, so first step. Suppose it's true for n equals k. Um, so that means that 7 to the 4k minus 1 is a multiple of 5. And then there'll be some working of some sort in the middle. I'm missing a page somewhere. No, that's okay. Um, there'll be some working somewhere in the middle. And I want to get to, um, therefore, true for n equals k plus 1. So let's see. That would mean that what we want um, is to say, so 7 to the 4k plus 1 minus 1 is a multiple of 5. Okay. So what that means is that this thing... I need to rewrite it so that it's 5 times something, because then it's a multiple of 5. So if I'm going to do my working, it should be something like 4k plus 1 minus 1 is equal to, don't know how many there'll be, but it'll be 5 times something, <coughs> because then it will be a multiple of 5. Okay? So how are we going to achieve this? Well, we need to use the fact that 4, 7... Uh, to the 4k minus 1 is a multiple of 5 and it might be easier to actually write down what that means in maths so sorry I'm going to have to squeeze a bit in here so 7 to the 4k minus 1 is 5 times something for some m I don't know what the m is but that's what it would be because now at least I can use that maths where I can sub it into something so let me just um, move this down a bit. Hopefully I've got enough room in three of them that I can squeeze it in. Okay, so I need to somehow use this, but I do know um, that I can probably sub in 7 to the 4k if I'm careful. So let's see, this would be 7 to the 4k plus 4 minus 1, which would be 7 to the... 4k times 7 to the 4 minus 1. Okay. I'm totally going to need more room, aren't I? If you're in an exam and you run out of space, 
just put an arrow onto the other page, say insert the rest here. Uh, okay. So I do know that 7 to the 4K is 5M. Uh, plus 1, isn't it? So that's 5M plus 1, 7 to the 4, minus 1. So I just expanded that bit out. Okay, so this bit is a multiple of 5. If I could be sure that 7 to the 4 minus 1 was a multiple of 5, then I'd be good. So I really just have to check that, don't I? Dan, that's actually my first case. I should be using that. If, if that's my first case, I really should have done it first. Um, so I might just insert that first this time. Unless... I wonder if I can be really clever. No. Not off the top of my head. I'm sure there's a really fancy way of doing this, but I can't think of what it is. So I'm going to um, actually just up here. So n equals 4, 7 to the 4, n equals 1, 7 to the 4 times 1 minus 1 is and I get a computer to tell me what that is or a calculator but I didn't bring a calculator 2400 which is a multiple of 5 okay which is 5 times four hundred and eighty Okay, so this here is really 5m times 7 to the 4 plus um, 5 times 480, because we already did that, which is 5 times m times 7 to the 4 plus 480, uh, which is totally a multiple of 5. So true for n equals k plus 1. Excellent. Done. And so therefore, um, 7 to the 4n minus 1 is a multiple of 5 for n greater than or equal to 1 by mathematical induction. Beautiful. I'm sure there are other ways of doing that. But at the moment, um, that was the first one that came to me, so therefore that's what I did. The key in this one is that I had to figure out a way of subbing this into the one below. Right, so they are three different proofs by induction showing how the middle bit is slightly different depending on the flavour of the original statement you wanted to make. Anyone got any questions about induction beyond that? Excellent.